My immediately previous videos in this playlist showed you how we calculate and interpret both duration and convexity. Those are signified by D and C in these formulas. So here we'll pull together duration and convexity and use them in a classic application. And that is we will take the bonds duration and convexity and we will, for an imagined or assumed yield shock, we will estimate the change to the bond's price, either in percentage or dollar terms. Further, I'm going to show you two examples. First, I'll show you what I think is a more intuitive approach to estimating the bond's percentage price change using Bruce Tuckman's bond example. And then after that, I'll walk through the mechanics of the mathematical expression that he shows for estimating the bond price change. And we would get to the same answer regardless of which approach we use. And it's good to be facile here with going back and forth between these percentage price change and the dollar price change of the bond. So I'm looking forward to sharing this. On the next sheet, I'll show you Bruce Tuckman's calculations, but on this sheet, I'm showing you what I think is a more intuitive approach to the same exact answer. And what we're doing is applying this formula at the bottom, which is a truncated Taylor series. Taylor series is a mathematical term, but it's a Taylor series applied to the bond asset class. So we are solving for here what's on the left, an estimate of this bond's price change, given its duration, convexity, and some assumption about the yield shock or the change to the yield. That's why up here, I'm imagining in two different columns, the yield shock or the change to the yield, and that's a yield to maturity. So we can answer the question, if we have a certain bond, if there is a yield shock, in this case of, let's say, 40 basis points, either down or up, if there's a shock to the yield, what do we estimate would be a, the impact on the bond's price? That's the question we're answering. Yield means yield to maturity. Yield is a single factor measure. And so we can safely say that what we're estimating here is the impact on the bond's price given a parallel shift. In this case, a parallel shift down of 40 basis points. In this case, a parallel shift up in four of 40 basis points in the term structure of interest rates. So for this bond, I have same assumptions as I've had before in the upper left. Borrowing Bruce Tuckman's assumptions, face value of 100, five-year maturity. Coupon is two and one-eighths. Yield is 2.092%. Coupon is greater than the yield, so we do expect the bond to price at a premium. In this case, it does, 100.16. No accident because I straight away used the Excel function for PV. And my division by two, multiplication and division by two, all reflect the fact that I am computing this price with semi-annual compound frequency to correspond to the cash flows that are paid twice per year or sem the semi-annual coupons. So I know the bond's price currently at this yield is $100.16 about. And then further for our exercise here, I'm assuming that I've already been, that I've already calculated or am being provided both the duration and the convexity of this bond at this yield. For an FRM or CFA exam, realistically speaking, it would be tedious to go from soup to nuts on this exercise. It would, that is to say, it would be tedious to calculate duration, calculate convexity, and then apply them in the Taylor series approximation. So I would say more realistically, if we're going to apply the Taylor series approximation, just in the interest of time, you generally will probably be provided at that point the duration of the convexity. So I've already calculated them. Those are reviewed in a previous video, play, a video in the playlist if you want to take a look. But safe to say, at this yield, the duration is 4.7 years and the convexity is 25.3 squ years squared. Further, hopefully you recall that strictly speaking, this is a modified duration because it's not a Macaulay duration, it's not a dollar duration, because it's the modified duration that's the correct measure of interest rate risk and that would plug into here into the trunk, what I'm calling the truncated Taylor series. And I'm calling it truncated because there we have a term here that's a function of the first derivative and of the second derivative, and we could go on. 
but we're only stopping it at the second derivative because that's going to give us an approximation we'll see that's very close to the correct exact answer. And so this is a modified duration of 4.7 years. And strictly speaking, this is a modified convexity of 25.3 years squared. Although in convexity, you rarely hear the expression modified convexity, just hear convexity. As a gut check, my modified duration of 4.7 is not as great as the maturity. It's less than the maturity, but it's in the neighborhood. And that's about right. That's what we expect. And the convexity will be in the neighborhood, roughly, of the maturity squared. The maturity is 5 years. 5 squared is 25. Our convexity of 25.3 is therefore plausible. So now we will apply this Taylor series again to answer the question, what if the term structure drops by 40 basis points or jumps by 40 basis points? What are we estimating the impact on the bond's price to be? And it's probably occurred to you that I don't need to go to the trouble of the Taylor series approximation because this is a single, what I call, vanilla bond. And so what I've done here is calculate the exact answer, right? If the yield drops by 40 basis points, then it's 1.692%, and I can just reprice the bond. This is the exact analytical approach. Similarly, oh, price goes up, as we would expect. Similarly, Yield jumps by 40 basis points, price drops, as we would expect. So right here, analytically, I'm producing the correct answers. And in this, if this were a real-life situation, I don't need to go to the trouble of the Taylor Sears approximation. The idea really is that we're imagining we are manage a portfolio of many bonds and the bonds may even include non-vanilla bonds like mortgage-backed securities that include embedded options. And so at that point in complexity of the portfolio, it becomes too much, maybe too much trouble for us to immediately or currently reprice the bond or the bond portfolio. That's what I'm doing. I'm doing exact repricing based on analytics here. But now I'm going to employ Taylor series approximation just to estimate. And so very simply for the first term here, you can see negative duration multiplied by my yield shock, which is all that I've done here. Negative my 4.7 years time multiplied by my negative 40 basis points gives me an estimated percentage change in the bonds price of 1.888%. And you can see duration is a linear approximation, so it's symmetrical. If the yield were to jump 40 basis points, I'm estimating per a linear approximation a drop in the bonds price of negative 1.888%. And here I've just solved for you can see multiplied by the current price by that percentage change to solve for what are the implied price changes symmetrically per that linear approximation. Okay, then I'm going to add the convexity adjustment. And the interesting thing I think about the convexity adjustment is that we think about the price yield relationship, price here, yield here. And I'm just using duration as that linear approximation. I'm using here, right, the, the line that is a uh, tangent here to the price yield curve, and it's a straight line. So I'm really solving for, in this linear approximation, I'm exaggerating here my scale for I'm solving for some point on this line. And the larger this yield shock, the more I'm inaccurate, right? There's a gap in my, in my estimate. And so that's the point of adding this convexity adjustment. And I didn't draw this very well, but the Interesting thing I think about the convexity adjustment is you will notice for this vanilla bond that it would be an addition in either direction. In either direction to correct for the linear approximation, we would add the convexity adjustment. And that is achieved by the fact that the yield is squared or confirmed by the fact that the yield is squared here. So when we, although the duration is symmetrical here in percentage terms, the convexity will be additive regardless. So our duration plus convexity, when we combine them together, will not be symmetrical. So here, 
I simply apply this formula, this term, 0 0.5, multiplied by my convexity, 25.3 years. You can see multiplied by my yield squared, ensuring that this convexity adjustment is positive regardless of the direction of my yield shock although it's a small number because I've squared that yield. And in my case, it looks like it is about two basis points, 0.02% as the convexity adjustment. And then now I'm just on the spreadsheet here, I just simply add those together so that I've realized the right-hand side of this truncated Taylor series in the bond asset class instance. And you can see I get an estimate of the here in the case of a, let's say, parallel drop in the term structure of 40 basis points, Taylor series approximation is telling me that the bond price will increase by 1.909%, which straight away multiplied on the current price gets me to an approximated uh, $102.067. And as mentioned, right, uh, this Taylor series goes on with additional third derivative, fourth derivative, et cetera. We know we're getting still just an approximation. So if I wanted to be strictly speaking, I could signify this approximation. But we don't oftentimes do that because notice how close we get. My approximation gets me 102.0674, remarkably close to the correct analytically repriced answer 102.0676 and in the other direction as well here my Taylor series approximation gets me remarkably close to the analytically correct repriced bond so that's the application and then now I will look at uh, Bruce Tuckman's okay so although it, he he shows his answer not for that same uh, bond example, but for one of his derivative instruments in table 4.1. Although, again, mathematically, we would get to the same exact answer regardless of what we're using. So I'm now switching the example of the instrument, but mathematically we'll get to the same answer just a, taking a different approach, and that'll be confirmed right here. So in this case, we have options, which are called TYUOC120, um, with uh, prices at different par rates, and we also have the price value of the basis point, or DV01. So this option here, this option instrument has a DV01 of 0 0.03505. And then, so by different approach to the same answer, all that I'm saying is that he's applying this formula here, which is identical to the formula that I've been using here. So it really is good if, we're, if, you're, if you're going into mastery of this duration convexity topic, it is good to get comfortable with the fact that these are identical. And the fact that, as you can see, we oftentimes multiply uh, the, the denominator here, the price uh, throughout to get a, instead of a percentage estimate, just a dollar estimate. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, so that's what's interesting. If we take my, the formula I've been using here, multiply by the price, then what we get here is negative duration times the price times the yield. And similarly, over here, we'll get plus 0 0.5 uh, convexity times the price. So I'll just, uh, t and then times the yield squared. But if we just look at the dollar du duration multiplied by price, that is the first derivative. And the Convexity multiplied by price is the second derivative. So that, in some ways, we get a mathematically a more elegant expression here, right? That the dollar, the estimated dollar price change of the bond here is simply, I'll take these out, the first derivative multiplied by the yield shock plus one-half the second derivative multiplied by the yield shock 
squared. So this first derivative here is dollar duration. That's why I keep saying function of, because duration's not the first derivative. It's the dollar duration that's the first derivative, and the dollar duration is modified duration multiplied by price. I myself don't get too hung up in whether the where you want to put the, ne the negative sign there. Because we know here, now going to his calculations, that the first derivative itself, if we think about that price-yield relationship, first derivative is the slope of the tangent. Well, that slope is obviously negative, so mathematically, that first derivative must be negative. And so to get that, now, I'm following Tuckman's example. He takes the dv01 and multiplies by negative 10,000. After all, the dv01 is just a rescaled dollar duration. So we do know that if we multiply that by 10,000, and we know that because of its units, putting negative in sign there, we strictly want to get the first derivative, which he does in his example. He gets negative 350. The uh, convexity is borrowed from previous calculations, which I actually have covered in a previous video. And then the second derivative here is the convexity multiplied by the price. Right? So just as, as I just said here, convex, if we multiply price here, and uh, ripple it through, convexity times price gets us to the second derivative. And so that's in fact what he does. And we get, uh, you know, non-intuitive units, but 48,000 of the second derivative. And you know, I'll unbold these so that I can bold the fact that in his exercise, what he solves for is the first derivative and the second derivative. And then he's ready to apply this formula here, which again is not different than the one I showed you at all. The only real difference is we multiplied price through so that we're approximating for a dollar change instead of a percentage change. And so then in his, ca in his case, he asked the question, what do we approximate per Taylor series if the new yield is 2.5%? Given that we're at 2.77%, well, that is a yield drop or parallel shift down of 27 basis points. And then he can straight away go to applying it. Here's the price we've already got at the current yield. Here's the first term solved for. This first term is just a product of two quantities. The first derivative, which we've shown here, negative 350, itself just the dv01 multiplied by 10,000, because there are 10,000 basis points in 100%, and the negative put in front, so first derivative, multiplied by the yield change of negative 27 basis points. And then the second term here, right, 0 0.5 multiplied by that second derivative multiplied by that yield shock squared. And so then we solve for both of those. We add them together. And then if we include the original price, we're, uh, we're estimating the new price. So he's implemented this formula here. So hopefully that's a helpful recap. And just to show you that that's a different approach to the same, what is in fact the same application of this Taylor series approximation that we would use to estimate the bond's price change, either in percentage or dollar terms, for a selected yield shock, given that we know the duration and the convexity. If that video is helpful, please subscribe to the channel and you'll be sure to be notified of our updates. Thank you.